green team today I want to talk to you about one of my very favorite plants this is the first plant that I learned to forage and it's called plantain you might be thinking hey is this the same plantain that looks like a banana and no it is very different so these are examples of plantain this one here is called broadleaf plantain and this one here is called narrowleaf plantain they both have a technical name to it. So broadleaf plantain is called Plantago Major. And this is the seed pod that will also grow. And this one, this nice long one that I, that I found, is called uh, Plantago Lanceolata because it's lanceolate. looks kind of like a lance or a spear. I'm sure that you have seen both of these in your yard. They're very common, growing on in cracks of sidewalks. Um, they're often just mowed over. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about plantain. One thing that you can use to identify both broadleaf and narrowleaf are the veins. Okay, they have vertical veins going up and down, whereas plantain, the leaves are always smooth and um, sometimes they could be hairy, little small hairs on them, but what you will notice is the vertical veins through plantain. Plantain also go grows in a rosette structure, so you will see all of the leaves growing out of like a center. When I first started foraging for plantain, I would often confuse it for dandelion greens, and you can see here that they look very different. Um, let's see, I'll put all three of them together. Um, they look very different, but when the leaves are young, it might be easy to confuse them. Dandelion has very toothy or jagged leaves. I believe that dandelion loosely translates as the teeth of lion, les dents de lion. In French and so that's what that's where the name comes from lion's teeth so always think about dandelion that having jagged toothy leaves so why would we care about such a thing as this little weed that we see growing in the ground what people call weeds well uh, plantain has a lot of med medicinal benefits so I have often when I'm in the yard or if I'm on a hike and I get a mosquito bite, I'll just grab some plantain and um, I'm gonna rip this nice big one. And I can just kind of smush it up a little bit in between my fingers if, if it's not that juicy of a leaf. I don't know if you can see that my fingers are wet now. Let's see if I rub it on my skin if you can see it. A little sunny. but you can see that the leaf is very wet now. You can rub that right on a bug bite and it will help the itching go away. So if you get a cut while you're outside or on a hike, you can grab that. If you don't have any kind of antiseptic with you, you do the same thing and rub the juice on it. You can even um, almost like make this a band-aid, wrap a bandana or something around it until you can get um, proper antiseptic um, and treat treating your wounds. Plantain can also be made into a tea, so you can boil the leaves up and drink a tea from it. Tea is useful for colds, respiratory issues, even menstrual cramps, indigestion, and it's an anti-inflammatory, so it's been known um, to be used um, for bronchitis to help um, reduce the swelling of the bronchial tubes. You can also use plantain to help keep your scalp healthy and your hair healthy. So ways you can do that, you can, like I just showed you, you can make the, um, the liquid come out and you can put it directly onto your hair or you can make a, a salve out of it. I like to dry it so that I have it for use um, later. So if you dry the leaves and then crush them up in a blender, blend them up into like a powder. You can save it and this way you have plantain on hand anytime you would like to use it. But for medicinal purposes, you can use plantain harvest at any time that you see it. Nutrition wise, plantain 
um, has a lot of calcium and beta carotene, some minerals. And for eating plantain, you will want to harvest them in the spring, early spring, before the, um, the, before it flowers, before the seed pods come out. Otherwise, these veins become very chewy, hard to, hard to chew and swallow. In the spring, I did collect a fair amount of plantain and I added it to salads uh, just raw as a, as a salad green, but you can also boil it and put it in soups or make a stir fry with it. Uh, it, it can have somewhat of a bitter taste a little bit, so um, you might want to pair it with something that's a little bit sweeter. Hey, something cool you can do, you can pair plantain leaves with the banana plantain, which is kind of sweet. If you were on a hike and you were getting hungry or something and you wanted to eat something that you could identify, one thing I like to bring with me is a little spray bottle. So you can spray off what you have if you were concerned about there being, you know, urine or something from an animal, you can spray it off or just pour your water bottle over it and then you can eat it. I have heard that if you eat three of these a day, every day, this helps you become more resistant to mosquito bites. I guess it makes you um, sweat out some type of or emit some type of odor that is not appetizing to mosquitoes. So we're not going to waste it. We're going to eat it. So that's a little bit about the plant called plantain. And I hope that you will help me spread some green by clicking like, share, and subscribe. You have a great green day.